Hi there. I'd like to share with you um, this case, um, Angela. Now, Angela is, she presented as a 58-year-old um, woman, and she's re referred by her general practitioner. So I'll just show you her teeth before we actually dive into um, the diagnoses. So the um, she's got some um, really, you know, very healthy um, upper three to three, maybe a little bit of recession just on here, but her posterior teeth have got periodontal disease. So we've got issues related to that. Now, her concerns were that she's absolutely terrified about losing her teeth. Really, really worried. She's worried about potential implant failure. Um, uh, she's type one diabetic. If you look at this, the third um, thing on her concerns list, her dentist that who is a regular referrer to me, um, is also concerned about dental implants and believes that dentures are probably going to be the best option for her. Now, Angela doesn't like the colour of her teeth either. She's worried about the effects of the existing bridge work failure, and she wants really superb dental work that looks great to keep her self-esteem because she's a registrar, she conducts weddings, she's in the general public, and she wants to, when she smiles, for everything to look great. It's really, really important to her. These are, this is her wish list here. And this is the sort of thing that I look at when I'm actually, I, I'm diagnosing that patient, whether I can address these, whether it's possible to address them, or maybe I can address them, or definitely I can't. That's the sort of thing I'm looking at, because I really want to start off without over-promising um, and under-delivering on the actual treatment process. So Angela wanted a perfect smile, and she wanted lovely, clean, white teeth. She also wanted no one knowing that she might have dentures, no discomfort when wearing dentures, no future problems caused by gum disease, honest, truthful recommendations, and also getting the work done in as quickly as possible time. Now, this is the most difficult thing here. No one knowing I may have dentures. When I explored this, it's very much about I don't want other people to know that I've got dentures as well. When we explored things further, she also said, really don't like the look of these bridges that I have in my mouth, particularly up here, these lower ones there. And my teeth just are not a nice colour either. So let's have a closer look there. So upper three, three, lower three, three are good. But further back, we've got these deep pockets on these teeth here, if we get the periodontal probe in there, drops right down over in excess of 11 millimeters on these two posterior teeth. And then once further forward, the premolars, we've got pocket depths ranging from about five to six millimeters on these teeth here. The upper and lower anteriors are perfect, all under three millimeters. These posterior ones have got some periodontal um, increased probing depths. This is just showing the occlusal view. It's sort of like common issues. We've got there has been um, you know, endodontic treatment through that bridge. These bridges have been in for about thirty years. Actually, they've done really, really well. Um, that was just where the that was the actual coping metal coping where we've got a little bit of the ceramic worn away there. Got this large span bridge at the bottom here, and we used to have a molar there that was had been recently extracted by. Um, her dentist and that used to connect to quite a large bridge on this side. We've just got a little ponty there just at the moment. So let's move forward. Now this is a radiograph that I just from the referring dentist. It just shows that we've got like really deep lots of bone loss around these upper and lower teeth. That tooth had gone by the time I'd seen this patient. But we've got uh, quite advanced bone loss on the posterior teeth. And then the upper anterior, upper and lower three to three, weren't too bad at all. Um, just looking at these uh, more closely, the PAs, we can see that we've got massive bone loss there on these. Hopeless prognosis, really, of those two, like that. And then elsewhere, we've got 
reduce, slightly reduced bone levels up here and slightly reduced bone levels down there. And, you know, just round here, not too bad at all, really. So these were our diagnoses. So we've got generalized periodontitis stage four, so it's quite advanced. It's grade C um, and it's, it's unstable. And we've got a risk factor of um, type one diabetes, which is quite a profound risk factor in these types of patients. Um, so the two teeth that I felt were hopeless, the upper right molars, and then the, the rest, the remaining posterior teeth, you know, the premolars and molars are remaining, had guarded prognosis. We've also got poor marginal fit and poor appearance of the crowns and bridge work, and we've got yellow teeth. So overall, in terms of replacing the teeth, not, not talking about the, the actual gum disease, just talking about replacing the teeth, we could do nothing, leave it as it is. Um, the patient had an option of partial dentures with or without new crowns. And with the new crowns, that's important because it's going to improve the aesthetics of those bridge abutments. So let's use the bridge abutments, change those, um, for crowns and then that will support the denture really nicely. And then we've got the other option, which is implant supported fixed teeth. So when we discussed all of this, the patient really was just not keen about having dental implants and the potential failure of that. And also the other thing is that dentures, and this is very important, removable dentures, apart from the clasps, it's the clasp, but removable partial dentures look better than implant uh, supported restorations because we can replace the gum work as well as the teeth and have those that gum work fitting really flush against the teeth because the patient can take the dentures out and give the um, teeth a clean um, whereas if we've got fixed bridges in there much more difficult to keep clean and for them to look great. What I like to do is just begin with the end in mind with the, for the patient right at the end. So we need to go through like a whole sequence of immediate dentures, new crowns on the teeth that had the bridge abutments, and then definitive partial dentures. But I like to just think about that whole process that we're moving forward to. So um, the... Um, So we, I'm wanting to really think about the denture design, in particular, Angela's main um, thing that she wanted, her wish was to have dentures that no one knows that they are dentures. So all of the metalwork needs to be kept lingually and palatally out of sight completely. Um, now, I know that these upper and lower um, three to three, it's so unlikely that Angela's going to lose those in the future. So I don't need to put metal backings on those teeth there to, to actually replace those because she's not going to lose them in the future. I don't need it for extra stability and support. So we can just keep those free. So moving backwards, um, we are going to replace the crown on this tooth here that tooth there and also that tooth there and then we can have those teeth have those guide surfaces milled in and resty so that the denture is going to fit really really well so keeping the clasps away as far as possible is that going to be gold or maybe a dental d clasp a dental d clasp is one where that is um actually tooth colored so and swinging this further back we want to keep all of the metal work away from the gingival margins by about three millimeters all the way around. So we've got a lovely clasp coming around here, which, so we've got two clasps on each of the dentures, one right at the back on the back tooth, keeping it out of sight. And then this one just tucked in, just in that disto um, buckle area, which is out of sight. Also, um, in this instance, I don't want to open um, Angela's bite up either. I just want to keep her bite just the same if she's wearing the dentures or if she's not wearing the dentures. So everything just feels the same. Eating and etc. is going to just be as comfortable as possible for her. 
In the lower arch, let's have a look at that. We've got a lovely sublingual bar connector that just sits underneath the tongue. It also maximizes the gap between the edge of the bar and the marginal, gingival margins of the teeth. And this is helping to just keep everything really healthy. And then we've got the a crown on that, a crown on that tooth and a crown on this tooth there, which will be milled parallel to each other and have nice guiding surfaces to allow the denture to fit really snugly and, and be very well supported and stabilised uh, during function. Two gold clasps on the premolars and in, the, in a lower partial denture, I'd like to have the clasps in the middle of the denture, not at the back edge. We could have a clasp on that ring on that back tooth, but that what I often find is that it, it, it's well retained on that back tooth, but it doesn't quite sit properly anteriorly, and sometimes it just sort of sits up, really. So I prefer them in the lower, on the middle of the denture, and it's not quite as um, aesthetically um, an issue there. We just keep them really low and out of sight. I love gingerly approaching clasps as opposed to um, occlusally approaching clasps much more much more aesthetically um, uh, hidden, as it were, because I don't like clasps. They're quite ugly, these sorts of things. So this is the um, this is the treatment planning card that I do for every single patient. And it's something I've done for years. It's something I learned from Michael Wise years ago, which is planning the case really well. Um, so we've got at the top there, we've got the objective, what I'm trying to achieve here and then this is the actual process of achieving that objective so everything's written down how many hours each appointment visit takes and then i can cost it out properly then so and also work out what i need to do for each stage in terms of the laboratory um, so getting the special trays done the dentures finished crowns etc so they're all built into that treatment planning card as well as the the fees associated with the with each of those um, lab stages too. So that then I can then come up with an accurate quote for the patient. And then I use that, that treatment planning card to, and also the design to help me write the letter for Angela. And this is the type of letter that I do for my patients. It is really quite extensive, but from a legal perspective, I just think it's really important. And what we do now is this letter gets sent via DocuSign, and then the patient can just sign that electronically and email it back to us and can sign the bottom of each page and date it for us. And then we can just pop it straight into the patient's records. What I do like doing with this is to... Um, just to address their dental concerns um, within the, the letter. And what I've just, my comments are here just in purple. And this is just an extract from that letter um, talking about, um, you know, she's got gum disease linked to diabetes, which has resulted in bridge work failure. And she's unsure whether implants are possible. And I put down here that I do not believe that intra dental implants are in the best interest, given the history and extent of the gum disease on the back teeth, because dental implants are prone to similar infections to gum disease called periimplantitis. And I put down here, I'm sure that there would be other dentists willing to provide this as an approach. However, I don't personally feel that that's the right um, approach to, to take. So, and, and so I'm just addressing these various things, but also what I think is really important to address at this particular point in time is the patient's dental wish list. So patient wanted a perfect smile here, as in aesthetically perfect. And I've put in there, I can help you with this in the treatment plan below. The only detraction is metalwork showing if you open really wide um, and from the gold clasps on the upper right first premolar. So opening really wide like this, head back and seeing underneath on the palate there that there's metalwork and also big smile, the gold clasp on that upper right premolar. 
And then just going through all of these, are we going to help to address that? Yes, we can. Yeah. So here we go, straight into treatment. So the patient did want lighter looking teeth, so I've just took, taken a shade to start off with, which gives us a reference for doing the tooth whitening. So Angela's teeth A3 in colour here at the moment. Um, these are my primary impressions for the patient. And because we're going to be taking out some teeth, we've got some saddle areas on this bit here. I'm not going to use those for the um, immediate dentures. I'm going to use special trays for this or custom trays just to help to get the perfect um, border moulding of those areas where we've got missing teeth here. So this is it here. This is my process for doing the working impression. So I've got a space tray. So around the teeth, we've got... Uh, four millimeters of space. So basically two layers of wax around the teeth there. About four, four millimeters of space in there. It's just so that we're not gonna catch the teeth at all. And then in the center of this here, I'm gonna pop some green stick compound and then push that into the mouth. And this helps me to locate the um, tray accurately and squarely in the mouth. So I'm not going to touch the teeth here, then pop that in. And then I can add a little bit on the outside and do some border molding of that flange area there that's on that upper left-hand side for the patient. So once I've done that, plenty of adhesive into the tray and then a nice medium mix of alginate into that, which is then glazed with a, a wet um, gloved hand and then that goes into the mouth and I border mold that really firmly and vigorously so pulling the cheek nicely around this area getting the patient to waggle a jaw open wide like that and we wait for that to set the lower impression is slightly more tricky because we've got the lingual sulcus to contend with. I need to just ensure that the tray is not overextended in this lingual area. And then I then board and mold that area by getting the patient, whilst I'm holding the tray down, to stick the tongue out and try and lick their upper lip like that and try and lick around the base of the lower tray too. There. So what this does is it just means that all of this sublingual area here is recorded beautifully um, by the patient. Because what we're wanting to do is the aim of the exercise is that the dentures that I make for Angela are just going to sit in the mouth. And when she does all of the movements for eating, chewing, talking, you know, laughing, all of these movements that we make in our everyday lives, that the dentures are not going to inhibit and impede those functions. They're just going to sit there. And so the impressions compensate for all of that, those movements. So once we've got those, the models are then just mounted in intercuspal position and Rowan cuts off the teeth off the model here. These are the, all of the pontics are just removed like that. And then the immediate dentures are made. So we've got a nice, these are gingerly approaching 0 0.9 millimeter stainless steel clasps on those teeth there. So, and then this is the upper denture looking at, this is the, the model there where we've removed the teeth and that's the immediate denture. One thing that I do make sure is that it's just the same and I like to copy it in the final denture, is the, this distal extension. So that extension is where the final denture will go. So the patient can get used to that. The fovea palatinia further back, about that level. So if I was making a complete denture for Angela, we'd take the denture further back to that level. But because it's a partial, we can bring it further forward. But I don't make any compromise on those um, on the tuberosity area, just like that. The dentures all collated 
all the way around. And just like with definitive dentures, two clasps per denture there. So we've got a nice circumferential clasp on that back tooth there and a gingerly approaching clasp on that premolar just there. Um, this is the lower. So just like with any free end saddle partial denture, I just make that free end saddle section just like a complete denture. And then it's all colleted around all of the teeth. We've got a circumferential clasp on that back tooth there and a gingerly approaching eye bar on that premolar there too. So here they are from the fitting surface. So essentially the same shape as the definitive dentures, but just in plastic. And these will be worn until um, we've actually done the new crowns and waited for some resorption to take place, which is generally about nine months span. So just looking at the clasping here on this upper denture, we've got a gingerly approaching clasp, this is on the immediate, and then circumferentially approaching clasp there. Plus we've got the artificial tooth there. And what I really don't like to have is pink gum work on a single tooth like that. So just like, it just looks like it's erupting from the gum. Aesthetically, this looks way better when we have finished and fitted these teeth. So, so there we've got at the top there, this is the immediate denture. So this is visit three here. It's ready to go in. Now also what Rona's made me are these little Duralay or pattern resin um, jigs, which are prep guides, which I can then fit over the teeth and then just section these uh, teeth off the model there. And I can section it accurately to allow the denture to fit really nicely. So they work really well. So we can actually, I can pop that on there. I'm gonna be taking those pontics out. So I'm gonna section through the denture there, through the bridge there, and that'll allow the denture just to sit in really accurately. And this is how I do it in the mouth here. So I put the prep guide on, section through the bridge itself. So that prep guide is allowing me to cut that bridge parallel to the prep guide. It worked really well. And just to help the whole fit of the denture nicely. Once I've cut through that, I take off the, um, the prep guide itself and just smooth that edge off because it's always like some sharp edges just around the border maintaining the parallel surface so blend that in and just use some a greeny a brownie and a green point just to polish that up so section that off and then what i need to do next is to get that dench to fit and i love using this occlude spray occlude, occlude spray so I pop that onto the, the fitting surface of the denture where it touches against the teeth. Spray that all over like this. And then we take that to the mouth. And what I do is I look at it and carefully how it's seating. So here, I'm just gonna rock it backwards and forwards like that. If it's not fully seating, it's often on a pier abutment like a middle tooth the whole thing pivots. So once I've checked that and done it, so I've rocked it, it rubs off the occlude, that powder spray gets rubbed off, take that out of the mouth. And then these little bits here, which you can see there, they're the parts that have just rubbed off. I take my burr and cut away those, just trim those down they're the bits that are holding the denture off, stopping it from fully seating in the mouth. And I take my time doing this, and it can take up to 10 goes. It, sometimes it can take more goes, particularly if we're doing a lot of alterations like cutting out pontics. So I'll do that and then back into the mouth make sure it fits fully down. So once I'm happy, the denture's fully fitting, I then will check the occlusion for the patient. 
So in this case, I really didn't want the dentures to prop the bite open at all. I wanted it just to fit into the existing bite. So using Miller's forceps, get the patient to bite together. And then I adjust off those areas just like this. So where it just touches on those collets on that biting surface, adjust that down until it fits really beautifully into the bite. And this is the denture fitted. Um, we'd extracted the, and removed that back bridge there, extracted a back tooth. And then, so this fits all the way around these collets here, you know, beautifully using that occlude spray. Same for the lower, get that fitting nicely. And then we're into a, in a relatively stable holding position for the patient. And we can move on to doing the tooth whitening. Um, move on to do the tooth whitening and then do the crowns later. But you can see how these stainless steel clasps really just fit beautifully on those teeth there, just to hold it in place. Um, that's great. So all fitting nicely there for the patient. So I also, we made these whitening trays just to go over the natural teeth. We wanted to lighten up the upper and lower three to three because they're the only teeth that have got no crowns on. So I can use the whitening trays for those. And we did that uh, over a four week gap and the teeth came up beautifully. So once I've done the whitening and I'll show you how they came up right at the end with the definitive dentures, it all matched beautifully. So once I've done the whitening, um, I want to now remove the crowns that are on the, the teeth here. So I just take those off. And then Rowan makes the, me these nice little silicone um, guides that just fit over there. And these silicone indices help me to make the temporary crowns that are just the same shape as the existing crowns there. So this is what Rowan gives me for that visit, for the crown prep visit. So I've got all my, these are for my temporaries here. And the, this is a bite registration, wax bite, which will help me to record um, into cuspal position for Angela. And also we've got these, the Enigma Life teeth, which we'd used on the denture. We've got some here now, the ones were A2, they, they were the ones that we used. We're gonna now go to A1 because the whitening has brought the teeth up really nicely. So we're gonna match those up there. Now, what my ceramic technician, Scott does is he copies those, um, the Enigma Life teeth, so that we've got beautifully copied um, uh, crowns. So visit one for doing the crowns is this. So I've taken the crowns off, sectioned them carefully, and then just put temporary crowns on just there. So here, here, there, there, and there, and there. So that's one visit. That takes, that's enough time for me to do that. Then the next visit, the patient comes in, and I just carefully refine, take off the temporaries, refine these preparations, put my retraction cord down, and take some impressions. What I'm thinking is when I'm doing these preps is I want to not damage the teeth too much. I want them to be as minimally prepared as possible because to reduce potentials for pulpal problems, I'm always really worried when I do take crowns off or it might be um, opening a can of worms and creating problems with the pulp. So I just want to do it super carefully and gently and not really cutting any of the tooth tissue away. We've got these six crowns ready. This is a, I used a silicone impression. This is Doric Flow Light for taking the impressions of all of the teeth. And then once I've taken the impressions, I want to record the bite with this. Now, within these cases, because we prepped these posterior teeth, all of these posterior teeth, we don't, there's no bite at all on the back teeth. So this is the patient in intercuspal position. So I want to record that intercuspal position and that will allow Rowan to relate the models together. There. And then what I do is then squirt in Futar D bite registration material in between 
there. So this is going to then allow accurate mounting of those models. And then it's over to my technician. Now, for all of my denture work, um, what I do is I do all of the denture work is and technical work is carried out at the practice through in the lab. But the fixed prosthodontic work, the ceramic work is done outside. So I've got to be super, super careful with my uh, lab communication. So I do, I give the technician the, um, the actual uh, denture design sheet with all of the impressions on. And the, then we can also copy the, um, the crowns so the Enigma Life teeth copied perfectly. I also write down exactly what I'm wanting to do. So this is via email. So I want each of these crowns to be monolith with the veneer and the porcelain and where I want the rest seats, et cetera. So I write it down. I also do a Loom video as well. This is a software which is fantastic for recording the screen of the laptop and also recording me showing things on the laptop, on my actual desktop, and I can work my way through everything. So, and this is just a little snippet of it. This is like 11 minutes recording. Just on the inside, a nice mesial shoulder, which will allow confluence, as in allow a, a rest, a lovely wing backing to fit onto the canine. So, so the metal work will extend from there all the way around. So we've got a lovely shoulder, please. Shoulder with a very small rest seat here. So just coming up to a lovely little rest seat on that. And so this is a great communication tool for the dental technician to really know exactly what I'm wanting. So here are the porcelain fused to zirconia crowns on the all on these lingual surfaces they are it's all monolith but we've just got veneering porcelain on the outside so the metal work actually just touches the monolith the actual zirconia it doesn't touch the veneering porcelain i've been using these for years for 15 years now and i really have got no issues I've had no issues at all with chipping with the ceramic work on these. They are really, really good. So these crowns are made parallel to the uh, path of insertion. So all these little ledges made parallel. And the ledge helps us to remove occlusal rests. So the small ledge there acts as a support for the denture all the way around, meaning that the we don't need to, I don't need to have as much metal work on the uh, top of the teeth, which is quite noticeable, you know, and the patient's laughing and talking, you can often see these things can look like fillings. But if we've got it just on a lingual aspect only, it looks like the, the darkness of the mouth, it's like in shadow, and it really is not a problem at all. Um, so you can see these uh, lovely uh, milled crowns, so we've got those, lovely milled shoulder all the way around with distal rest seats and all the way around, all the way around fitted. So we're ready for doing a definitive impression now. So just a close up of that very, very thin um, margin, only point, about point 0.3, point 0.4 of a millimetre of that thickness for the metal work, swinging around to a distal rest seat. This is the upper left six the first molar and then this is the lower left lower right for there just with that lovely so it's just going to come round here and onto that that's the metal work there and you can see how beautifully these crowns match one of the reasons that i love using porcelain fused to zirconia is that my technician matches them so beautifully with the natural dentition without that graying that we can get with porcelain bonded to ceramic. So once I've done that, now what I need to do is to just to prep the natural teeth, the rest seats. 
So in the upper here, I've done subtractive rests just on these little cingulums down at the base here. And I've also marked the occlusion up after I've prepped just to make sure that I have kept the um, preparations where I've got these rest, um, rest seats on the teeth out of the occlusion so that the denture can just fit into here uh, without propping the bite open because I just want the denture to fit into the bite as if the patient is not wearing the denture at all. So once I've done that and prepped the teeth, I am ready to do my definitive impressions. So this is for, this is the lower, and I'll put the lower on here first because the lower is so important with this sublingual bar here. So we've got uh, our um, occlusal stops on the anterior teeth and also on that saddle area. So that just lifts the tray up a little bit and avoids the dent, the tray from touching the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. I can then add my lingual sausage of just a little thin earthworm for doing the um, uh, sublingual bar impression. So that just, this goes into the mouth firmly over the teeth, hold it down. And then what I ask the patient to do is to really lick that upper lip backwards and forwards. Before I put on the green stick though, and this is really important, before I put on the green stick there, I want to make sure that this is not overextended. If that goes into the floor of the mouth, and when the patient moves the tongue up from side to side, if it is touching there, then I'll trim it back. If I'm in doubt, then I'll just put a little bit of silicone just on that lingual edge there impression material just to double check to see if it gets rubbed off. It's not totally accurate, but it does help to see if we're, we're impinging onto the floor of the mouth because that is an absolute no-no, it's impinging on the floor of the mouth. So if I'm in doubt at all, I cut it back. And then I add some on the lingual edge here and then get the patient to stick the tongue out, side to side, and then over the top as if I want to, the patient to almost imagine that they're using their tongue to clear the mouth of food. You know, whilst we're eating, the tongue is really active and it goes around and clears bits of food everywhere. So, um, and I don't want the denture to inhibit that, the sublingual bar to inhibit that at all. Once I've done that, I then make an impression in medium bodied silicone and get the patient to perform all of those movements once again, even more exaggerated, really sticking the tongue out so that it wipes and they alginate very, very tightly up against the green stick there. So right out, stick it right out side to side, and then just eases all of this area there. So this is a really accurate functional impression of those areas so we know that we're not going to be extending the impression the technician is not going to be extending the the sublingual bar the major connector into those areas that are going to get um interfered with whilst the patient smiles and eats and talks so upper one very similar to the um first one that i did so i just clean up the special tray that we originally used pop green stick onto the fitting surface and then that uses a stop and then I put lots of adhesive on, take that to the mouth uh, with uh, blueprint X cream, um, alginate and goes in, really border mold this area so that's you know functional width and depth of sulcus, rubbing and I rub into the occlusal surfaces a little bit of the alginate before I put it in. So we get that detail of all of those lovely rest seats, those, um, uh, the lingual surfaces that have been milled on those crowns, all of that details reproduced, very, very important. So we went from that straight to a try-in now. So this is a try-in of the actual dentures um, and the, 
red material is duraway or GC pattern resin. One or the other is worked beautifully for this. Um, and that's shaped up in exactly the same way as the chrome framework, the metal-based metal chassis. So we can take that to mouth and try it in. And then we can assess various things in the mouth. These are so useful, these Duralay try-ins. Uh, and I'll explain why they are so useful. We can pop them in the mouth just like this. So first of all, if they fit really snugly and well, it gives me confidence that the definitive model that we have, the working cast that we have of the patient is accurate. So that's number one. Number two, I can check the occlusion and make sure everything is clear. And then number three, we can assess the aesthetics of the patient and just make sure the patient is totally happy. And I can show the patient in the mirror here what the denture is going to look like and say, look, where you see the red, this deep red colour, that's where the metal work is going to show. Are you okay with this? But you can see how beautifully everything's adapted there. You've got these lovely light and teeth from the tooth whitening. These are the, the try-ins in place. So these are the teeth just set into the wax with that pattern resin framework here. That single tooth up here, there. I can check the bite, make sure it's fitting into the um, intercuspal position just perfectly, just like that. And also, the patient can assess the aesthetics thoroughly. Look at that. We've got this beautiful gum work on there. It just looks like natural teeth there and not a bridge. You know, we've got everything in place there. So the patient can, what I do at this point is um, I get the patient to a big smile, we photograph them, we can put them on the screen, and also get the patient to do a little video of them talking and socialising. Claire does this with the patient, my nurse. So talks to the patient. And so the patient can see themselves in their everyday life, smiling, talking, um, and then really assess it uh, properly. So they can look at it on the photo. They can look at it in the mirror. They can also look at themselves on the video too. It really helps. So once we've done that trying, it's now time to get the metal casting checked and finished. So I can check and make sure that fits beautifully. So we've got the lower one here. We've got the gold clasp. So these are 0.9 millimeter wrought gold clasps, which are welded to the chassis. There's a little bit of opaque on here. We've got this beautiful sublingual bar that's beautifully polished. And also the rest on these um, milled crowns with this uh, rest on the natural uh, canine there. That's got a little uh, rest seat on there, composite rest seat. Nice ring rest at the back here too. And we're following the three millimeter rule, keeping the as much of the metal work away from the gingival margin as possible. This is the upper. So we've got the metal work fitting into all these lovely surfaces on these milled crowns, on these premolars and that molar just there. Circumferential clasp right at the back there. And we've also got this extra support on these canines, just in case these premolars are lost in the future. They, they're lovely substantial rests out of the occlusion to keep them out of the occlusion. So that just fits into those rest seats that we've cut in. The occlusion centric in, sorry, in, in intercuspal position is just on those teeth here all the way around, nice and evenly. We can assess the aesthetics. You can see there's a little bit of green just on here. I've sprayed that onto the fitting surface just to double check it fits perfectly. Here's the low one in place. And you can see that the metalwork is really well disguised when it just sits lingually. It's almost in shadow, just out of the way with that sublingual bar just fitting further down. Now the sublingual bar doesn't rest on the gingiva at all. It's just purely to support the saddles, a lovely rigid support 
This is me just checking the bites, making sure that everything fits into place perfectly, and it's not propping the bites open. You can see here clearly where that lovely gold clasp is welded for the chassis too. And then once we've done that, it's over to finish. So Rowan really skillfully finishes the denture and adds the, the teeth on here. So these are the dentures finished. You can see that it just, everything just flows up into that saddle area. So we're not covering those gingival margins. So each saddle has support either side just to sit on. We've also got this lovely support strut at the back here. So, and that's quite important, particularly when we've got an extension like this coming to the back there like that. That just adds us a little bit of extra um, stability and strength in the back there, and also helps with accuracy of fit. These fit better if they've got that little bit there, in the back there. And then this is the fitting surface. What we like to do is just have like, where it fits up against the teeth, it's either, it's not polished or it's even sandblasted. If I have to adjust that fitting surface, just use a, a little bit of 50 micron aluminium particles out of the sandblast just to roughen that surface and where it touches the where the the metalwork touches the soft tissue it's highly polished so and this is the lower here all finished beautifully with that ring connector gold clasps nicely extended saddle area there yeah looking back everything we're keeping it away from the gingival margins as much as possible there so it's keeping all of these ginger bees free as possible, helping to keep the ginger bee as healthy as possible, reduced caries, reduced periodontal disease, really important. Looking at the fitting surface of the lower, it's got various features, which I like, which is a lovely polished sublingual bar. That's what fits against the soft tissue, so it's highly polished. Where it fits against the teeth here, we've got sandblasted fitting surfaces, sandblasted, and you can actually see where I've made the little composite rests to allow the denture to sit on those too. And then here they are in the mouth. So fitting beautifully. I'll often use occlude for, for the fit because just having the plastic and the acrylic work on, it can stop the denture from seating on some of the guiding surface. So just need to make sure it's fitting really beautifully using occlude. And that's the finished uh, denture in place, looking amazing. So we've got these beautifully whitened teeth at the front there, superb periodontal health, which has been produced and by the patient, but listening to Saeed and really following his advice. Saeed did a little bit of surgery on the back teeth as well, just to reduce the pocket probing depths. Got the dentures in place there. Look at that, look at that saddle there. It doesn't look like that looked totally amazing. There, we've got the missing gum tissue, we've got the teeth there. You know, if we had implants there, we could not finish it in that sort of way there. Obviously, if we don't have implants, there wouldn't be that glassware there on them. But we're doing a denture because the patient is worried about implant failure in the uh, because of a medical history of having type one diabetes, which really does increase the potential for implant failure with peri-implantitis. You can see this lovely single tooth there, butt fit, no um, gun work at all on that. That's that clasp right at the back, keeping it out of sight. Lovely supported ring rest at the bottom there, and then these gingerly approaching eye bars on that. And that's the patient finished. You can see this is the canine. That's the um, crowned artificial. That's the crown tooth there. And then we've got the gold eye bar. And the gold eye bar is just not visible at all. When the patient's talking, she does not show any of the teeth, any of the um, clasps at all. It just looks really, really good. And this is what Angela said afterwards. She was really, really delighted with the, the end product. And 
she felt that the partial dentures were absolutely perfect and so comfortable to wear. And it does look really, really fantastic. And she brought us some nice flowers there to finish. So thank you very, very much for listening to this presentation, if you've got it all the way through to the end. And if you want to see this patient as a newsletter, then just send me an email. It's um, education at finlaysutton.co.uk. And if you're also interested in seeing some more of these cases, then please just get in touch with me. And also, if you are interested in potentially some mentoring for the future, then just get in touch with me and I can help you with these sorts of cases, planning them and moving them forward. So you can get them, the, the case started off right at the beginning, really well and follow that all the way through. Thanks very much indeed and bye for now. Bye bye.